Amen. Thank you, Lord, for this privilege once again to be in your house, to come uh, expect you, Lord. Lord, to just give us what we have need of, Lord. Give us what we have need of this morning. We want to feast around your table that you've laid out for your children this morning. God, just, we want to be so surrendered to you, Lord. Our minds, our thoughts, our thinking, everything, surrender to you so you can take us and, and use us for your glory, for your people, for the edification, the blessing of your people. Lord, we just thank you. Bless your children. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you this morning. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord. Once again, with you all, welcome. Those of you that have been away, we welcome you back. Amen. God bless you. Brother Adolf, God bless you. Spoke to you yesterday. Sister Olga. Amen. They've been away a while. But we're so glad to have you back with us. My, you're such a blessing to me. Praise God. I hope that I can live as long as Him and be as healthy as Him. Amen. God has been so good to him. And we just appreciate him. Amen. Amen. Yes, amen. The highest regard for my brother. Amen. 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 Been through so much and God has kept him. Amen. Delivered him. Amen. So it's so good to see all our visitors. We want to welcome you. Amen. Brothers back there, God bless you. Amen. Good day. Amen. Amen. Gracie, good to have you back. Yeah. You know, you <laughs> Sister, Sister Hope, also glad to have you. Amen. I know you did the way God did good to you. See, yeah. Good to see you back in the house there. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise God. And thank you, Brother Richard, for your prayers because here I am. set the day for the next Lord's Supper and foot washing. We have set a date and I trust that it's uh, agreeable with all of us. Uh, we have set a date for the Lord's Supper and foot washing for uh, it will be the last Sunday of January this month which is January the 26th Sunday evening. That's January the 26th, Sunday evening for uh, Lord's Supper and foot washing. So just keep that in mind. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. We want to continue our subject on perfection. Have you been enjoying that little series here on perfection? Amen. And we want to, we've been reading out of Hebrews, the sixth chapter. But now we want to go to Hebrews, the tenth chapter. I'm not through with Hebrews, the sixth chapter, but we'll cover that on Wednesday again. The Lord willing, we'll cover Hebrews, the sixth chapter. We'll continue. I have some more things on it that, that need to be said. But now we want to turn to Hebrews 10 because 10 is actually, uh, Hebrews 10 is, connects with Hebrews 6. 
And so reading here in Hebrews, the 10th chapter, Hebrews chapter 10, Michael, it's good to see you. Yeah, I think we have the same problem. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. God is good, isn't he? Amen. God bless you, Brother Michael. Amen. Amen. Hebrews, the 10th chapter, and verse 1. We want to read some scriptures here and then speak a little bit. Try not to keep you more than two hours. <laughs> For the law, having the shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers there unto what? Perfect. Perfect. Those sacrifices could not, could not make the, the children of Israel perfect could not bring them into perfection. And Paul goes on to say in verse two, for then would they not have ceased to be offered because that the worshipers once purged should have no more conscience of sins. Conscience of sins. And if you, you trace that down, that word conscience, it means no more desire to sin. The worshiper once purged. Now that couldn't happen in the Old Testament. That couldn't happen uh, by the blood of bulls and goats and animals. And that could not take place. It could not take the desire to sin away. Man offered his sacrifice. And he went out with the same desire to sin. So he had to come again. But he couldn't do it more than two times a year. If he did, then they stoned him. But, but in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. Every year. Remembrance of sins every year. So your, your sins, they were, your sins were remembered. But that that was under the old old covenant. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. It's not possible. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. Amen. A body, see, that was going to be our perfection. We were going to find our perfection in that body Amen. that God prepared. God prepared himself a body, not made with hands, not by sexual desire, and not human intervention, supernaturally, virgin birth, virgin born. A body has thou prepared me in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast had no pleasure for then said I lo I come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do thy will O God Amen. above when he said sacrifice and offerings and burnt offerings and offerings for sin thou wouldest not neither hast pleasure therein which are ordered by the law then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. In the first covenant was a law. And uh, the new covenant, grace. yes, was grace. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once 
for all. One time. Yes, sir. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. Yeah. Oh, Could never take away sins, but it was not in vain. God commanded it. That was the old covenant. Amen. It held back the wrath of God. It held back God's uh, judgment. They had to do that. It, 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 it didn't uh, annihilate sin, though. It was just a shadow. It was just. It was just uh, for a time until the real sacrifice, a body has now prepared and appeared, and God was made flesh. Amen. But this man, this man, who, who is this man? Jesus Christ. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Amen. Amen. Right hand means power and authority. Not that God's got a right hand with it, with somebody sitting on the throne on his right. But, but it's referring to the power and authority. All that God was, he poured into Jesus Christ. Amen. Now he's on the right hand of God. From henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. Hmm. Footstool. Right. <coughs> I want to declare that the enemy is our footstool. Amen. The enemy is your footstool. Amen. For by one offering he hath what? Perfected. Amen. For by one offering he hath perfected. That's what we're talking Amen. about. We've been speaking about this for several messages. I want us to get it good. He is perfected forever then that are sanctified. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. See, that's the second covenant. That's the, under the second covenant. That's under perfection. Paul says, let us go on to perfection. Let's bow our heads so I don't keep you standing too long. Father, we thank you for this little assembly this morning. Oh, Father, you, these are your children. They're here because they wanted to come to church. Right? Yeah. And they wanted to hear something that would help them. It would encourage them. Amen. That's what we want to Amen. receive. We want to be strengthened. We want to be encouraged. Yes. Lord, if we've sinned, if we've fallen short, if we've uh, done wrong, we repent. Amen. Amen. We repent daily. Amen. If we say that we have not sinned, then we lie. Yes. Because we all sin. Yes. Fall short Amen. of the glory of God. Amen. And we need your mercy, your forgiveness. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. Lord, and we don't want to take it for granted. Amen. Lord, we don't want to take the grace of God for granted that we can just go live any kind of life and right. come back and be, be forgiven and, and knowing that you'll do it. But we, we won't want to live that way. Amen. We don't want to live like that. We want to live higher than that. So help us this morning. Lord. Help your children. Help your people. Help us to be united, Lord, in your love and in your word. Lord, uh, and we give you the glory and praise forever in Jesus' name. We want to greet all those that are on the internet. God bless you. You may be sitting. Seated. I don't know. Is the internet on working? It's not, it's, no, no, it's not working. Okay. No problem. So, so we've been speaking uh, about perfection, how a true predestinated child of God desires to be perfect. 
a, a, a true child of God desires to be perfect. If you are a, a son of God or a daughter of God, that, that's your desire. They, they want to uh, believe and keep the word of God. Amen. Man shall live by every word. Now as human humans, we have earthly desires as humans. And we have cravings. Cravings and, and uh, many of those cravings and desires are not sinful. They're just normal human <coughs> Desires that the human <coughs> that the human part of us craves for yeah. right. to to better uh, ourselves to get a better job make more money or drive a better car live in a better house and, well it, it, everybody has that that desire. And you feel sorry for all these homeless people. Everywhere you go, there's homeless. Mm -hmm. And just thank God because, you know, it's God's grace and mercy that, that he's given us so much. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And, and uh, we don't have to serve him that way. We can come into a nice warm building and <coughs> sit in a nice fine pew and worship God, praise God. Amen. Have a good time. And then after we worship, we'll go and have a good meal somewhere. Amen. So we're, we have nothing to complain about. Amen. God's Amen. given us so much. <coughs> when there's so much poverty in other countries and other worlds. And then God has given us so much in this country. And he's going to demand more. But that's that's human nature to better himself, you know, to, to live better. And there's nothing sinful about that. It, it can be, but not necessarily. It just depends on the person. Your, your desire, see. We sing that song. It's my desire. Yes. Amen. To live for Jesus, it's my desire yes. to live for Him. And so, desire is a real important thing. See, this sister told Brother Brown, and Brother Brown, I'm always making mistakes and sinning and falling and, and doing things wrong. Well, sister, you know you're you're going to that's going to happen. You're you're human and you're, you're flesh and blood. And as long as you're in this body, that's going to happen. But you must remember, what is your desire? What's in your heart? Amen. It's to serve the Lord, brother. Amen. It's to serve the Lord. You know, so a lot of times the devil uses our failures and our defeats and our losses to discourage us Amen. and to cause us to, to backslide. We backslide. Now, when you backslide, you're still redeemable. But backsliding isn't good because that backsliding can lead to a falling away, yes. apostasy. If you're not careful, backsliding uh, can, can lead you to apostatize. You keep backsliding. And, and pretty soon you're denying the faith. And you think you can live any way you want to. And do what you want and still be blessed by God. And you may be. You may be. But it's not the perfect will of God for us. Amen. Yeah. We want the perfect will of God and we want to make it to heaven. Amen. We want to make it to heaven. Because there's many on that day that will say, Lord, Lord. Jesus said, not anybody that says, Lord, Lord, shall enter. But he that doth the will of my Father. Well, we prophesied in your name, Jesus. We spoke in tongues. We healed the sick. We did mighty, wonderful works. We 
did this and did that. And Jesus didn't say they did. They did all those things. Because the rain falls on the just and the unjust. He causes his rain to fall on the good, on the just, and on the evil. God causes that. Even on the evil. Look at Balaam, the hiring prophet. He had a genuine anointing. Balaam. Genuine anointing. Genuine prophecies. But he was a false prophet. See, the anointing was genuine. It was real from God. But his teaching was false. He caused Israel to commit fornication. With the children of Moab. When he couldn't curse them, he, he caused them to commit adultery and fornication. Caused God's wrath upon Israel. God to destroy many of them. Because of Balaam. But he was anointed. Caiaphas anointed with the spirit of God. He prophesied that one man should die for the whole nation. He prophesied. But he condemned Jesus to the cross. Caiaphas, <coughs> Balaam. Some of the most beautiful prophecies are from Balaam. If you read them. They were all of God, but yet he was false. Now, is he in heaven? No. Well, you judge for yourself. Well, Saul, yes. Yes, Saul. Saul's in heaven. Yes, Saul. Saul uh, backslid. Yes, he did. So we'll get into that a little bit. So the Bible says here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 47. The first man is of the earth, earthly. The second man is the Lord from heaven. That's the second man. Amen. So the, the first man is your first birth. Amen. The second man is your second birth. As is the earthy, such are they that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Amen. See? So the first man is of the earthy, and the second man is the Lord from heaven. See, that's the new creation. He's a creation. The second man is a creation of the word. We are a creation of God's word by the new birth. He starts that new creation in us by giving us new birth. That's the Amen. Lord from heaven. Amen. So, so uh, we've got to bear the image of the heavenly. See, Bearing the image of the heavenly, that's our theophany. The theophany is the heavenly man. Our eternal body. It's called the word body. The theophany word body that we, we heard from that body by a new birth. Now only the redeemed have theophanies. Not only the redeemed have theophanies. The, it's only the redeemed have angels. The angels that are encamped around the redeemed. The people of God. The ones that fear God. Not, not just any anybody. You have to fear God. You have to 
be in Christ. You have to be one of his children. Yeah. And how do you become one of his children? By believing in him. Yes. It's open to all, whosoever. Right. But God, being infinite, he knows who is and who isn't. Amen. Or he's not God. If he doesn't know who is and who isn't, then he's not God. That's right. Amen. He knows. So by his foreknowledge, knowing who would and who wouldn't, he could predestinate. Predestinate, predetermine your destiny beforehand. Oh my Amen. God. Now, the greatest desire that we could have by the grace of God, brothers and sisters, the greatest desire that we could have by the grace of God is the desire to be perfect. Amen. Hallelujah. Is the desire to be perfect. Look at a woman at a at her wedding. She tries to look the best that she can. She wants to be perfect. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. The bride wants to be perfect. She wants yeah. to look perfect. She Amen. has a certain picture in her mind how she wants to look. My, my. And she does everything she can to bring that look, image into manifestation. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's good. Amen. The bride. And we are the bride of Christ. Amen. So the greatest desire, if you just get this one thing, the greatest desire that we could have by the grace of God is the desire to be perfect. Amen. See, we can have all our human desires fulfilled and be satisfied and be content. Like the rich man that said, I'm, I've got all this harvest and I got no room to put them. So I'll tear down my old barns and I'll build new ones and I'll put all of my new harvest and I'll fill my barn and say, soul, my soul, just relax, kick back, retire, you're, you're fine. Yeah. So eat, drink, and be merry. And then God said to him, thou fool. Yeah. God called him a fool. Yeah. Thou fool, foolishness. That's all foolishness towards God. This night they require your soul. And what will become of all those riches? Shine. Mine. See, that was his desire. He spent his whole life, his desire, building up his treasures. Wherever your treasure is, there is your heart. The treasures. We can have all our human desire. You can fulfill your, your ambition, your goals to be educated and get a job. And there's the, that's not sinful. It can be, but it's not <coughs> sinful in itself. It's what you do Amen. with it. Amen. But that's <coughs> not the most important thing in your life. And that rich man in the Bible didn't understand that he ended up in hell, crying for a, just a drop of water to quench his thirst in hell. Amen. So that's the most important thing is to desire to be perfect because Jesus' sermon was be ye perfect. As your Father in heaven is perfect. Jesus required it. He required it. To be perfect. Because there's an inner man in us that wants to do right. Amen. There's an inner man in us that wants to live right. Amen. Amen. That wants to obey God. It wants to keep his commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments, Jesus said. See, we, we don't we don't keep his commandments 
a true child of God that's born of God now doesn't keep his commandments because he's afraid of him or because he's following a, a set of rules or a, a, a guidebook or a, a book that tells him what he can do and what he can't do. Him <coughs> what he can what he's what he can do and what he can't do, do's and don'ts. It's it's not about that. It's about loving him. Amen. Amen. It's about falling in love. If you love me, falling in love. See, then this book won't just be a book of do's and don'ts. So I, I can't do this. I have to do this. I have to do this. And I have to keep the Sabbath. I have to eat certain meats. I have to stay away from certain meats. And all kinds of things. I have to be a, a Nazarene. I have to be a Presbyterian. I have to be a Catholic. I have. That's all nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that yeah. cannot, no religion, no denomination, no organization can bring us into perfection. Amen. All right. Amen. All right. But there is an inner man in us that desires to be perfect. That's that inner man. And you, the outside man says, oh, I'm not interested, or I don't believe it, or I, I can't make it. Well, what's the use? Yeah. You can't. Yeah. Absolutely, you can't yeah. make it. You, you can't do it. There's absolutely no way. And if you couldn't do it, God wouldn't accept it anyway. Because it's works. It's man-made works Amen. without faith. Amen. See, there is an inner man in us that, that, that wants to, to do the right thing. And this inner man is always in conflict with the outer man. Yes, sir. <laughs> See, you're two people. You're two people this morning. You're a, you have an inner being in you and you have an outer being. You have an inner man and an outer man. The Bible says so. Amen. Amen. You have a, a, a dual nature. The outer man contacts your earthly home. The inner man contacts your heavenly home. And once you get the Holy Spirit inside the inner man, you will find out how contrary your flesh is to your spirit. Right. Once you get the, the Holy Spirit inside the inner man that's in you, it's desiring God, that desires for perfection. Once you... you, you Get the Holy Ghost. You will find out how contrary your flesh is to your spirit. You will find out how hot the battle is going to be. Amen. And so people don't understand that, oh, I got the Holy Ghost. Everything's supposed to be rosy. I mean, I'm in heaven. La, la, la. Oh, my. I'm in cloud nine. Oh, praise the Lord. It's fine then. But then an enemy comes in like you're a target. Yes, amen. Then you become a target for the devil. And the devil's going to throw everything he can at you. Yes, yeah. and, and distribute a warning post for you in hell. Get this one. He thinks he's yeah. holy. He thinks he's saved. He thinks he's good. See, the devil doesn't know who's saved or who's lost. He doesn't know who bright is. He doesn't know who a real child of God is. He doesn't know that. He's not infinite. Only God knows that. Amen. The devil doesn't know those secrets. Yeah, He's yeah. limited to his Praise knowledge. Amen. All he does, the devil, he watches. He watches and if he sees you striving to, to be perfect, he'll go after you with That's every gun right. from hell. Pointed at you, you are the main target. Amen. Yeah. And so people get swept off their feet and get discouraged. And 
They don't realize that that's just a sign that God's called you. Amen. That's just a sign that you are one of His. And that He has recruited you into His army to represent Him in this battle, this warfare of the Spirit versus Satan and the flesh and the world. The Holy Spirit and you and we're partners. Amen. Holy partners with us. Hallelujah. We're, we're, we're partners. Praise the Lord. In Amen. Combating those three things: the the world, the, the flesh, and the devil. Just like the Indian chief. Remember the Indian chief that got saved and then he got converted, and the missionary preacher. He went back to him and asked him, how you do 